It has been a while since I've gotten to go out and fly the drone, but today we're going to get it out and I'm going to try to do something pretty unique with this. The area I'm hoping to spray today is this large about 20, 25 acres of conservation ground, which is actually right directly behind the main farm place. And this will be the first time all year that I'm going to be spraying directly next to standing water. There's a couple ponds. I think there's three ponds out here we're going to be spraying next to. And we're not going to want to put chemical in the pond since there are some fish and wildlife out here. So I'm going to go back to the yard. We'll get the small mapping drone sent up in the air so we know exactly where the spray drone needs to go so we can kill any weeds out here in these prairie grasses. Also, before we head back, I will say I'm a little bit skeptical because there is quite a bit of terrain following and small trees out here that the drone needs to go around. Normally I fly the drone about 35 miles an hour. Because there are some small trees and shrubs and I'm only gonna be spraying about 12 feet above just the common ground height, I'm gonna be taking it slower out here since we're not wanting to crash the drone on what I believe to be the last job of the year. This is the small mapping drone we're going to use to go out pre-map all the area that needs to be sprayed and mark the areas that don't need to be sprayed. So we'll send this up, gather all the pictures, and then mark those areas on the computer. Here we go. I'll hit start. We got the drone taken off there. Going to take about 200 pictures back there of our area. I took our SD card out of our drone here. We'll pop this into Pix4D fields on our computer. That way we can start mapping out the area that needs to be sprayed. Here's all the pictures we took out in that area. Each individual blue dot's a different picture. This summer I was using my laptop that I had from college to stitch together all these pictures. And I went ahead and made quite an investment in a nice Apple MacBook computer and it says it can stitch these pictures together almost instantaneous. So I'm gonna hit the start processing button here on Pix4D Fields and put this to the test. We'll hit start processing. And I'll keep the feed rolling because normally this would take about 10 to 15 minutes for my computer to stitch it. Now it's saying it's got about 30 seconds to go, which is truthfully amazing. Could save me a lot of time come next summer. It took about 30 seconds. Here's the stitched image we got put back together. It looks a little different since there's no growing crops out there right now. Everything looks dead and kind of brown and miserable. But... I'm going to go ahead and start clicking around the points of where we want sprayed and where I don't want sprayed on these water systems, as well as there's a little crick that goes through here that we're going to want to get pretty close to but not spray. So we're going to go around and click everything now. I forgot I'm not actually going to need to click around all of these points around the water. That's because Pix4D Fields just came out with this new AI um, detection for boundaries and obstacles. So I'll mark this water. It gives that nice white line around it so that'll be an obstacle or a no spray area. Same with all of these other water features. The AI in Pix4D Fields, which is working really nice, is automatically detecting spots that I'm selecting that I don't want to spray. The map's sent here to the drone controller. Now I need to start charging up some batteries, make sure everything's ready to go on the drone before we get out to the field. So we'll see if we can get the generator started. Start charging. <laughs> That's one thing I wish I could go back and do differently. I bought this generator, it's about $5,000. It's a Duramax, here's the cover for it. Duramax 16,000 dual fuel. I personally have had nothing but issues with this generator. I know other people that have had success. If I could go back, I would buy a diesel generator. That'd be my advice to someone else potentially looking to buy a drone generator. Now I'm gonna try some starter fluid, see if we can get this thing going today. Well, a little bit of starting fluid did the trick. Got the batteries all set up to charge there. I'm gonna get the truck hooked up to the trailer since we don't really like dragging chemical all the way a half mile down to one end of the field. I think I'm just gonna go, well, I don't know exactly where I'm gonna park, but I know I'm gonna want the truck hooked up to the trailer. Here's the chemical we're gonna be spraying today. It told me on the map I have a total of 23 acres we gotta spray. So I'm gonna read here on the label, see how much water and chemical we gotta dump in, then we should be ready to head out there and start running the drone again.
while the trailer's filling up with a few more gallons of water, I thought I'd show you guys what we normally use to spray this CRP, which is kind of old. We gotta crawl through a couple things, but here it is. A pull type sprayer. It works, it works fine to spray the CRP. The problem is the ground is so uneven down there when you're spraying with this, that it just makes for a miserable ride. So that's why this year, we're gonna try the drone in theory. It should be a lot easier. It should get a lot better coverage since we don't have GPS or anything when we run that sprayer. So let's head on down there now, try it out. Now the last time we had the drone out was when I crashed it and fixing it. So let's hope that isn't what happens here today and we're about to take off. likes to kick up a lot of the corn stalk leaves, which is fine. It just, I maybe should have parked on a gravel road rather than here. So we need about five or six fills to finish this field. So we'll pop in some new batteries, put in some more chemical and send it right back up. some of those drone shots and even this one you can see the drone is struggling where there's water it's wanting to lower the height of the drone and then when it gets back to the bank where it meets the land it's struggling to incline super fast that's, that's why I got to slow down the speed of the drone otherwise the drone will just crash into the bank overall though I'd say we're doing really well especially you can see here the drone the nozzle turns on and off exactly where I mapped it in Pix 4D fields if you're interested in Pix 4D fields, I have my link down below that'll take you to it. It works really good on applications just like I'm doing today. Now here comes the drone back after its final load we have the 23 acres sprayed man that thing kicks up a lot of debris when it wants to land here well now for the last time of the year at least that's what i anticipate it's time to fold up the drone Today's the last 70 degree day of probably the year. So my goal for the rest of the day is to get to Manafreeze, run through all the pumps on the trailer, make sure everything's cleaned out of water, chemical, that way nothing cracks or freezes or gets wrecked over the winter, and find a home for the drone because I don't want to keep the drone and the batteries out in the freezing temperatures. So try to find a place to keep all that stuff over the winter months at the farm. In preparation of getting everything ready here for winter, I don't know, but I'm assuming it's not good to have these batteries sitting out in the freezing temperatures. So I'm gonna bring all these up to my office. Those will sit in the closet all winter long, as well as all the chargers as well, since I don't know, I just feel like it's probably for the best to bring all this stuff inside since it can get to about 30 to 40 below if it's gonna sit in one of these cold storage sheds. So for starters, we're gonna haul some of this stuff up to the office. For starters, I'm gonna get some water ran through all of the hoses and our pump here, just get it washed out of the chemical we just sprayed. Then once we get that cleaned out, we'll throw in some antifreeze.
Now that I got our big cone empty and all the chemical out of the lines and the pump, it's just water running through. I think I bought 12 gallons of antifreeze. Basically, this is a product that's not gonna freeze inside the lines. So we're gonna dump all these in and this is what'll sit in everything over the winter. Six gallons of antifreeze in there. Now I'm gonna open up some valves. We'll get some antifreeze running out just so we know we got everything covered. With our antifreeze in there now, everything should be ready to go on the trailer side of things, at least that I can think of. I have the big totes completely emptied out of water. Those have been dry for like the last two months, so I didn't put any antifreeze in there, but all the antifreeze is in the lines. I have the air conditioner I was intending to use this summer in here still. I'm not gonna take that out. I gotta imagine that can survive the winter. Now we'll just grab out our last battery and the controller and the trailer's ready to go parked for winter storage. Now as for winterizing the drone itself, I'm gonna run some water through it, clean out all the nozzles and everything of the chemical we just ran. We'll put some antifreeze in the tank We'll take the tank off the actual drone. The drone itself, I'm gonna put in the heated shop at the tank. There's no electronics on it. And once I have antifreeze in it, it should be fine. So now we're just gonna run some water in. Nozzle flushing. Now that I have the drone and the trailer all winterized, I have to say, year one of the drone business has been nothing short of a crazy ride. I learned a ton of things, met a bunch of awesome people. And honestly, year number two is gonna look different. That's all I have to say. And with that, I'm gonna leave this video on a little bit of a cliffhanger. We're gonna get this backed into the shed because we're gonna have some snow here coming in the farm in just a couple more days. So that's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. Hit subscribe down below to see what happens. We'll see ya in the next one.